Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word, and we are in Proverbs chapter 12 as we continue to walk with those incredible uh, knowledge of the Lord, uh, pushes us into discipline, which is again this chapter. Chapter 11 was righteous behavior part one. Uh, We get to see righteous behavior part two um, as we walk through chapter 12. And so as we have these knowledgeable proverbs leading us into that discipline in the way of life uh, we grow in wisdom once again those three concepts of the proverbs and so as we walk through here we get to see again the contrast uh, that that the uh, that solomon puts forth here um, understanding the contrast between righteous and wicked now i just really want to kind of over uh, see it for you in this way kind of overview it um, and it's this contrast has a lot to do with timing. Righteousness doesn't always have this timing of instantaneous, and we don't like that in our world this day. Uh, wickedness actually has this timing of uh, uh, instantaneous, and so it gratifies, it comforts us uh, right away, but it doesn't go over time. Righteousness might not be something that lures or attracts right at first, But over time, it is the walk of faith. And so as we see these contrasted, you'll see a lot of timing has to do with it. And so it is this righteousness that just lives out consistently um, is such a blessing. And this wickedness that might not have ramifications instantly, but it does have implications instantly and over time time as the proverbs put before us no further ado chapter 12 proverbs chapter 12 it says whoever loves discipline loves knowledge but he who hates correction is stupid discipline and correction bring about growth verse 2 a good man obtains favor from the lord but the lord condemns a crafty man A man cannot be established through wickedness, but the righteous cannot be uprooted. A wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like like decay in his bones. The plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the speech of the upright rescues them. Wicked men are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous stands firm. A man is praised according to his wisdom, but men with warped minds are despised. Better be a nobody and yet have a servant than pretend to be somebody and have no food. A righteous man cares for the needs of his animal, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. He who works his land will have abundant food, But he who chases fantasies lacks judgment. The wicked desire the plunder of evil men, but the root of the righteous flourishes. An evil man is trapped by his sinful talk, but a righteous man escapes trouble. From the fruit of his lips a man is filled with good things, as surely as the work of his hands rewards him. The way of a fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice. A fool shows his annoyance at once, but a prudent man overlooks an insult. A truth a truthful witness gives honest testimony, but a false witness tells lies. Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. There is deceit in the hearts of those who plot evil, but joy for those who promote peace. No harm befalls the righteous, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in men who are truthful. A prudent man keeps his knowledge to himself, but the heart of fools blurts out folly. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in slave labor. An ancient, an anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. A righteous man is cautious in friendship, but the way of wicked leads them astray. 
The lazy man does not roast his game, but the diligent man prizes his possessions. In the way of righteousness, there is life. Along that path is immortality. That last verse kind of sums it all up. The way of righteousness, there is life. There is direction. There is, as it says, immortality, because it's the way of God, kingdom of God, that isn't just temporal, but is rather eternal, but the way of wicked, uh, the way of sin, the way of uh, the allurement and attraction to self and to this world only lasts a little while, only lasts temporal, it has nothing to do with eternal. And so uh, the way of righteousness, there is life along that path, there is immortality. The contrast between righteousness and wickedness, the contrast be being able to say, how do I live out my life? Righteous behavior, part two, as we have in chapter 12 here. Um, how do I live out my life in a right relationship with God? Him being able to actually give me that strength to walk in righteousness, to walk in faithfulness, so that I can walk not just in temporal, but eternal impact. As I wander from that, as I separate myself from that, I walk away from life. I walk away from the path of eternity. I walk in just the temporal timings, reactions. And a lot of our reactions are going to be selfish. A lot of our reactions um, are going to be about our comfort. And so these Proverbs warn us, guide us, bring about the knowledge of the Lord to us that in all things, the way of righteousness, the relationship we have with God is so much more important than anything in and amongst our world. And it shapes and it informs us to be able to actually live in the world, not take us out of the world, but live in the world in a right relationship with God, in a faithfulness to our families, to our neighbors, to our friends, as God is working in and through us. The way of righteousness might not always be easy, comfortable, but it is the way of life. And it's the way of faithfulness. And it's the calling that God has for us in our life in Jesus. The way of wickedness could be comfortable, could be instantaneous, could be selfish. A lot of times, sometimes we're lured by that. But it's not the walk of life, and it's certainly not the way of God. And so as we walk this day, <clears throat> may we walk in not just asking the question, but knowing the answer. What would God do? What would God have me do? And he always gives us that answer. Just walk in the way of faithfulness in your relationship with him. And that will have a temporal and perhaps an eternal impact on those around you. And to that, as we're used, as we're called into this day in the way of righteousness, it lasts, and what a great timing it is. The time is now to live in that right relationship and faithfulness with God. And to that day, what a beautiful day. What a full of life day. What a day that we just say, thanks be to God. Have a, day. Have a great day.